Tonight on Channel 6 News Weekend Edition, we have the very latest on Cedric Marks, who escaped custody during his transport back here to Bell County. Plus, a local group is helping women break into the trade industry. You'll hear about it in this week's Central Texas Spotlight. And Super Bowl game day is finally here. We have a look at the fun. Channel 6 News Weekend Edition starts right now. Her transport services was en route to Bell County at the time of their stop. Marks also has warrants for the murders of Michael Swearingen, age 32, and Jenna Scott, age 28. There you're hearing straight from Montgomery County officials about escapee Cedric Marks, who we now know is wanted for the murders of Jenna Scott and Michael Swearingen. Just this very moment, we're learning he has been captured after escaping transport and being on the run for nearly 10 hours. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Imani Payne. Right now we know Marks was being transported from Michigan to Bell County when he escaped from the transport van while they were stopped for food in Conroe. We know he ran away on foot and at some point he ditched his shirt. Now here's a look at the scene as Montgomery County Sheriff's deputies scoured the area looking for Marks. You could hear them shouting at people to stay back and to stay in their cars because as we know, Marks is a professional MMA fighter and is considered to be very dangerous by police. Now we have complete team coverage of this very fluid situation. We want to start things out with our very own Andrew Moore. He is on the ground in Conroe where Marks escaped. Again, breaking just now, we're hearing he has been captured. Andrew, tell us what you know. Yeah, Monty, after a nine hour search, local and even state and federal officials were able to uh, contain Marks to capture him once again. We're still trying to figure out though exactly how he got away. That van you mentioned earlier pulled in to this McDonald's right behind me here. We don't know exactly what happened. All we know is that one, one guard, there were two guards, left the van. The other one was only nearby the van. That's when Marks made his move running off to the east. And then, of course, they had to tell local authorities. Local authorities got right on it. That was when we found out at noon today, for the first time, that uh, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office told us Marks is officially wanted for the murders of Michael Swearingen and Jenna Scott. This, at the same time, as the Sheriff's uh, Department, the police and law enforcement were combing the streets for any sign of Marks. They had to bring in air support. They brought in dogs to track Marks. And they were telling people to stay inside because they considered him so dangerous not attempt to assist or search for Cedric Marks. He should be, be considered dangerous. If seen, do not attempt to make contact with Marks. Contact 911 immediately. There was also some confusion on whether Marks was restrained in any way as he made his, his, his escape. We found out at noon that his hands were not restrained in any way, we don't know if there were any of other security measures there to just keep him from running off. There's going to be a press conference in about the next 40 minutes that we're going to hear some more details, hopefully about how he got away and why that occurred. We're going to bring you that information as soon as we possibly can. Imani. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Now, if you remember, Marks is the ex-boyfriend of Jenna Scott. She and Michael Swearingen went missing from Temple last month. Their bodies were later found in shallow graves in a small town in Oklahoma. Hundreds turned out for the funeral and celebration of life events held for both Scott and Swearingen as their families continue to plead for answers and justice. Tonight, understandably so, both families are still processing this latest news. They did release a brief statement to us saying in part, the family is praying that he is captured and now that we know he has been, certainly a little bit of good news for them. So what all do we know about Mark's escape? Conroe police say he has warrants out for his arrest and the murders of Michael Swearingen and Jenna Scott. The first time he's publicly been tied by any law enforcement to their disappearance and deaths. We're looking at the information as it comes out today and Curtis Quillen joins us as our team coverage continues to try and sort the fact from the fiction. Hey, Curtis. Hey, Imani. With some of those claims going around on social media after uh, today's story came out, we wanted to verify the fact from the fiction and separate information into three separate categories. Things we know are true will go here in the left uh, column. Things we know to be false will go here in the center and things we're still waiting on answers for. Those will go over here in this still questionable column. We're going to start with what we know. Marks was being extradited from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Bell County, Texas on a warrant 
for burglary of a habitation issued by the Temple Police Department. Now, because of his mixed martial arts background, police are indeed considering him to be dangerous, as, as we said earlier. They've been telling people not to approach him, no longer an issue since he's been captured. Now, earlier this afternoon, around 2 o'clock, claims had been circulating on social media that Marks had been captured. That only became true about 25 minutes ago. Lieutenant Scott Spencer from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office made the announcement on Twitter stating that the manhunt took about nine hours, which would put his capture around 415, 420 this afternoon. So after Marx's custody, we don't know of any claims now to be false. So things still up in the air over here to the right column. First, the Conroe Police Department in a press conference this afternoon and the Montgomery County Sheriff said that Marks is wanted on murder warrants for the murders of Jenna Scott and Michael Swearingen. When we asked them where that came from, they pointed us back to Bell County. So we reached out to various agencies here in the Bell County area. When we called the Bell County Sheriff's Office, they told us that this is a Temple Police Department case and to contact Temple PD. So we did. We contacted Temple Police. They told us they did not have any uh, releasable information at the time and to call the Bell County District Attorney's Office. We reached out to the DA's office here in Bell County, but have not heard back as of yet. So we're going to leave the murder warrants here in the question column because we still are not sure where that came from. Furthermore, Jenna Scott's father, Jonathan Scott, told Channel 6 he was unaware of any murder warrants out in the case until this afternoon's press conference in Conroe. Next, it's unclear if Marks was restrained during his transport. During this afternoon's press conference, Conroe Police Lieutenant Dorsey McGinnis said that sh the department was not aware if he was wearing any kind of hand restraints. However, the company, the private company based in Taylor, used for the transport, the Texas Prisoner Transportation Services explicitly outlines in its online frequently asked questions that all prisoners and detainees are moved in quote full restraints outlining that that means waist chains, leg irons and handcuffs. We have reached out to Texas Prisoner Transportation Services for comment. However, of the two phone numbers on their website, we have not been able to reach them on either one because one of them has a voicemail box on the phone. It said it was not set up. The other number listed did not even ring. Now we were continued calling everybody this afternoon to try to find answers to these claims and continue to separate the fact from fiction as this story continues to develop. Imani. Great reporting there, Curtis. Thank you. And as you know, we have been closely following this developing situation from day one. For more information about the victims or for an extensive look into Cedric Marks and his background, head over to our website. That's KCENTV.com. Well, it's time now for a first check of our weather. Meteorologist Zach Scott is standing by with that Super Bowl forecast. And Zach, is that Rams gold I'm seeing over there? Oh, actually, I can't explain this shirt. Look, I didn't even know you knew the colors. I was messing with you yesterday. I was like, now, Imani, who's playing tomorrow? I know the team. I'm actually wearing the yellow, the bright yellow shirt today because areas east of I-35 have been in the clouds the last several days. While the last couple of days, areas west of I-35 and currently along I-35, seeing some sunshine mixed in. So I felt bad for our eastern viewers, and I wanted to bring a little brightness to your day. 69 degrees, first weekend in February, feeling like the first weekend of March. Temperatures yesterday, mostly mid-60s to lower 60s. Today, upper 60s and a lot of low 70s. Hit 71 in Waco today. Hit 72 in Temple. 74 Colleen and 75 in Gatesville. Even some 80s down there around Lano. We saw sunshine start to mix in here in the last couple hours, really across a good chunk of the area. Clouds will build back in this evening into the overnight, and we'll do it again tomorrow. That cloud cover building back in. Yeah, all that moisture around. It's going to keep temperatures in the low 60s again for lows. That'll mean more patchy drizzle, more patchy fog like we've seen the last four straight mornings. No change for your Monday morning, starting with the cloud cover again. Sunshine tries to break out, maybe even more clearing across our western zones tomorrow. Yes, highs tomorrow. If we can get a lot of sunshine more than today, will not have a problem and should not have a problem being more in the mid to upper 70s with maybe even a few more lower 80s mixing in. And if we can hit 79, we'd be tying our record high for Waco tomorrow. Yes, 
February 4th, we're talking about record highs. The record heat will not be lasting for long. It will be going away by the time we get towards the end of the work week. So Imani, I'll be talking about the cool down heading into next weekend in a couple more minutes. All right, thanks, Zach. And a gunman is on the loose in Waco tonight after shooting and killing a woman early this morning. It happened in the 5600 block of Wilshire around 3 this morning. That's where police found a woman in her 20s dead inside her home. A witness told officers someone ran into the home and shot the woman. No arrests have been made so far. And in Temple, one person has died following a car accident. It happened around 1130 last night on Airport Road in front of the airport. Police say 38 year old Random Allen was backing out of the parking lot when his car was struck by another vehicle. Allen died on the scene. It's unclear if the person who hit Allen's car is facing any charges, but an investigation is underway. And back in Waco, another person is dead after being involved in a crash there. It happened in the 1400 block of North Valley Mills Drive. Police say a car was pulling out of a parking lot when someone riding a motorcycle collided into that car. That person was ejected from their bike and later died at the hospital. Officers say the speed at which the biker was traveling did contribute to that crash. And we'll have much more after the break. Stick with us.